Hey there, my name is Brad. I'm the Harley Davidson Wizard. Today on the hoist, we have a 2019 Fat Bob. It's getting a cam and a SNS oil pump. And it's got a fun little pipe on it. And the customer wants to use the Screaming Eagle Street tuner that came with it. So I figured I'd turn the camera on and bring you along. Here's the bike, like I was saying, it's a 2019 Fat Bob. I can't say it, I've seen this pipe before. I think it says. TBR on it. It's got a little. It's engraved with a little skull on it. But let's see if the GoPro can pick that up. It's a nice looking pipe, but these pipes are always a lot of work. It seems like to keep looking good, you know. Unless it's it has a full coverage heat shield on it, it seems like a lot of work, but. It looks good on this bike. I like this color combination where it has the black denim in it along with uh, like the metallic orange. It's a good looking bike. I think it only has 7,000 miles on it. Here are the parts that we're going to be using along with the special tools that are needed for this. Starting over here, this is a complete kit. Here's the part number, getting it from Drag Specialties, I believe, 0932-0251. But it's a SNS cam plate, this big boy. And the correct oil-cooled oil pump for this vehicle. Nice parts there. This is the first time that I've used the SNS lifter cuffs, but they are part number. 0929-0075 it comes with the lifter cuffs it looks like a couple new bolts to hold it down and then some new lifter block hardware just some normal lifter block hardware like the bolts that are on the bike have a little HD engraved engraved in it but whatever this is the complete power cam kit from Screaming Eagle with the black adjustable push rod tubes part number is 92500075 it comes with the black adjustable push rod tubes little caps the little covers obviously the adjustable push rods o-rings on certain models uh, I want to say like 2018 or something there was like a weird deal where the push rods didn't come with it had a different style push rod too. It comes with a cam cover gasket. It comes with a oil pump o-ring and then uh, another o-ring for the cam plate and the actual camshaft itself. Let's double check. It says Screaming Eagle. It says Screaming Eagle 8 462. So yes indeed it is the HP cam. Might as well double check. From Screaming Eagle well, from a Harley Davidson and the Screaming Eagle catalog, we have a full roller and her cam bearing. It's part number 9290A. And then just note the last two parts are just regular Harley Davidson items. But the sprocket retention kit it's part number 25566 06. And then the cam spacer kit is part number 25928 and 06. And then these are really just the additional special tools that make this easy and easy to do but we have the the tool to measure the pinion shaft run out just to double check it isn't like crazy screaming eagle assembly lube it's just another part that you get at the harley davidson parts counter the inner cam bearing tool that i like to use um, I, I purchased this myself and I've had it for a while but it's part number 94144-09 and then the tool that we're going to use to install the cam bearing this is a Harley Davidson specific tool but on the front of it it says HD 42325-04 and this is a 
Kent Moore tool, so it's specific to Harley Davidson uh, dealerships. But I will post a couple links down in the description as far as uh, where you can buy this tool at. It's really inexpensive. It's nice that it does Twin Cam Evo and Milwaukee 8. And also where comparable tools like these these are. So check out those. They'll be down in the in the description. So it's getting late today. So we're going to leave the project like this. There's no reason to tear into it and have everything wide open. But we'll get started on it first thing in the morning. Pop the exhaust system off. Get the cut the push rods out of it with the bolt cutters and then uh get everything going so here you go like and subscribe thanks for watching In other videos I've talked about how it's important to use the rear tire while the vehicle's in gear to roll the engine over to make sure that you get the one set of cam lobes that you're working on on its base circle before you cut the push rods out. Rather than go through that process again, I'll just put a link down in the description as far as uh, the original SNS video that I watched and that I've been using that procedure ever since then. So it's been a, been a while, but check that out down there. I'm gonna get in here with the bolt cutters and cut the push rods out. I've already rotated the engine over. This, the rear cylinder is on the base circle, so I'm gonna cut those push rods out, get them out of there, and then come over here to the front cylinder, roll the engine over, get this on the base circle, and cut those out. But check that out. Earlier I was talking about how there were some, there was one year of like funny style push rods. It must be 2019 because this bike's a 2019 and how the o-ring is retained into the lower push rod tube. This is like the on only year that's, it's like that. So when you go and use these adjustable push rods, you'll change out this top cap. You know, if you have a black kit, you'll just like pull all this business apart. You'll put your cap on, you'll put your spring on, and then you go over here to, that's why these little washers are included. You'll put your washer on. So you go spring, washer, and then you'll put your O-ring on here. You'll slide that on. And then you'll put your bottom push rod tube. And then it just has this little taper in here and that's what seals up the o-ring is that little washer and the top of that taper but that's what those little washers are for if you didn't know but i don't know if this will pick up like all the dirt and just like debris that's in there but you'll want to go through and make sure that you clean all of your new parts off along with i always go through because there's like assembly oil on here and the push rods it's there's like you can't tell but there's a lot of tension like with grease in between the threads there and it makes it a real pain in the butt when you go to adjust it inside the engine so I just I unthread them all the way 
We're almost there. I unthread them all, all of the way. Make sure that the passage in the center is nice and clean. Also in the actual push rod itself. So I clean all of this stuff out with our alcohol-based multi-purpose solvent. And it makes it real nice and easy to spin together when you're going to do your final adjustment. Now that we got the push rods and the push rod tubes out, since we're going to be doing lifter cuffs on this project, we might as well pull the lifter block. What I like to do is I like to use an Allen wrench to first break the screw loose and then I'll either use a 3 16 bit and like a little ratcheting kind of guy like this and get in there or if the screw is loose enough I'll use a 3 16 ball allen but you just want to be careful about this because it's really easy to booger up the the head of the screw if the screw is in real tight and potentially strip out the top of it so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to be careful loosen all the screws up pull them out pull the lifter blocks off and then continue on Lifter block screws are always a real pain in the butt because they're in like the way that the lock the lock patch dries it makes the screw like so much more secure in the lifter block screws than the rest of them for whatever reason it seems like so sometimes where if I have to get into like a deep corner like that I don't know how well it's showing up on video but this is a snap-on bit that I have just a snap-on 3 16 bit about this this one specifically for doing uh, shifter levers because it's a little bit longer but sometimes I just use a punch and like punch out the little tool bit for it so then I just have the 3 16 bit and it's a real high quality bit so then it doesn't booger up the screw and then I just use a 3 16 socket on a slight wobble Put that on a quarter inch drive, stick it on there, and then just be careful that you aren't scuffing the cylinder fins or anything. But that way it seems to work out a lot better because you have a positive fit in the head of the screw, like this, and a positive fit in the actual socket, and then the wobble is in the actual extension rather than like if you were using a ball allen you just rather than if you were just using like a ball allen you get a lot better of a positive fit so that's what i'm going to do but i'm going to get this lifter block off and then get the rear one off and keep on going Sometimes when I'm working really close to like an interference fit where like your tool or whatever you're using might drag on something and scuff the finish, which obviously isn't what you want to do. The, this dealership has changed names. We're now Arsenal Harley Davidson, but I just use like a license plate and then stick it back in there and it's flexible enough and thick enough where it gives you a buffer. So it, it really, reduces the chances of any type of touching or marring a finish but just a little tip and trick that I use.
All right, we got all the screws out and they're all in good shape. I don't know if they'll show up, but here are what the stock screws look like. I don't know if you can tell, but they have like a little Harley Davidson engraved in it. It has like a nice little serration all the way through. So since we kept those in good shape, we're gonna clean up the threads here and then also clean up the threads in the engine case with a thread chaser. But we'll do that upon reassembly. So the next part is to get out the stock. Let me get some light in there. Is to get out the stock lifter cuff. These bolts are in, in the engine case with really good Loctite, just like the lifter block covers are. I've had it where I want to say two of them, like the first two I did, the head snapped off a bolt and it was a real cringe moment, but with a little bit of heat, I was able to get the rest of the screw out. But so if this screw, I'm going to break it loose and then sometimes running it back, like back and forth, back and forth, loosens up the Loctite enough where the screw comes out nice and easily. But if I break it loose and even with turning it back and forth, if things don't feel right, I'm going to use a little bit of map gas and get the threads of it warmed up so that I can pull the bolt out easily without damaging the bolt or the engine case. But just, just a little heads up that it can be a pain in the butt. So take your time. So we've chased all of the threads, all of the threaded holes, and with the thread chaser that I was using, I was able to get to all of the holes for the lifter block, except for this back one. In situations like that, I just grab a spare bolt and I cut a little groove in it. This is just like one that I have laying around. I don't know if you can see that little groove in there. I just do it with a Dremel. And that just gives, um, any of the crap that we find in a threaded hole, a spot to go. And that's exactly what a thread chaser does. So I'm just going to run that down there and clean out that last hole. And then let's take a look at the components that came out of the spike. Here's the condition of the components if you're interested. Like I was saying, this bike has 7,000 miles on it. It looks about normal. These camshafts are made in a weird way, but it's got just a little bit of wear through there. It's not usual, like it's not typical to see grooves in newer Milwaukee 8 pumps, but there's a weird kind of like shadowing deal that's happening here where it's like where the scavenge pump was like touching here, not here, and then here again and then kind of patchy through here. Like this bore isn't perfectly circular. I don't know if that shows up. There's like a dark spot there. 
and then it looks like it wasn't touching here and it was touching here and then a little bit through here realistically it's not like it's supposed to be touching anyways but you know it's supposed to be gliding on a film of oil but that's kind of weird there's a few grooves in there like it picked up some trash this is the scavenge pump so I'd say that's a little unusual for 7,000 miles let's look at the feed side same thing there's kinda like this shadowing here let's see if I can get this other direction there's a darkness here and then through here it's thin and then a darkness and then a thin and then darkness again and then thin and then darkness I don't hopefully the camera is picking that up it's weird it looks like the pump body like that's a high spot that's a high spot that's a high spot so instead of being like perfectly round it has like kinda of like I don't know little scallops in there I feel like I normally don't see that and you can see a few circular grooves in here nothing super deep but you can kind of hear it as it's going through and being installed in the pump and it's got a few little marks on the top on the top lobes of this gyroter again this is the feed side it's got some like uh, some I guess you'd call it frosting that seems to be what Harley-Davidson calls this type of discoloration typically is frosting but interesting so the scavenge pump sorry I probably had that mixed up but if I did have that mixed up I'm sorry the thin one is the feed pump and the wide one is the scavenger pump so yeah there's some like frosting like on the tips of the lobes not a whole lot of material or anything like big hard pieces of material that's where you get kind of the grooving kind of like that I don't know if you can tell but there's a few circular lines in the scavenger pump and also in the feed pump seems unusual uh, nothing too crazy through there things pretty much normal here you can see where a couple pieces of metal had been picked up and ground into the surface it's not in terrible shape just usually I feel like I don't see see this happening just yet there isn't anything like catastrophic here or anything just in case you wanted to know what 7,000 miles looks like sometimes this is what it looks like some, sometimes I would say that there's like a machining oddity in the way that this pump body is made as like that seems weird like with those high spots and those low spots but this bike has a k and oil filter on it and I don't know I always recommend running the Harley Davidson normal oil filter along with either standard or scrim eagle sin 3 oil I can't tell you how many times I've run into unusual valve train problems where like the guides pulled out of the head or seized on the, the valve stem or just unusualness like that and it ends up having some sort of weird funky oil in it so I don't know if this is a situation from oil like oil that isn't as good as it could be or exactly what the deal is but there does seem to be a little bit more wear here let's go take a look at the lifters 
So our lifters are right here. I guess I could have positioned them close to the camera, but whatever. So when I pull them out, you want to make sure of which way your, your uh, oil fill hole is. That way you can orientate it correctly. They aren't always, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's, this is the rear cylinder, so it's sitting like this, and then the front cylinder is sitting like this. It doesn't matter which way the feed hole is pointing. When I put new lifters in, I always put them pointing in the same direction. But this one came out with the, the bleed hole pointing down, where its buddy had its bleed hole pointing up. I'm just saying they, they go in either way, but if you're going to be reusing them, make sure that you look and double check. So this one is pointing up, so I'm going to remember that. I don't know if you can tell, but this lifter here, this lifter roller, this is a surface finish that Harley Davidson call, calls frosting. They say that it's normal, like that's a normal thing that happens. But for some reason, it only happens with stock lifters. I've never seen this happen on any type of aftermarket lifter. So I don't know if it's just the way that they're made or manufactured or hardened. But let's see. I think there's one that had more frosting than the others. Maybe this one. If it were me, I'd just buy fueling a new set of fueling lifters to go with your new camshaft like it's $150 you've already spent probably $700 on the cam plate and oil pump I would save the money on the lifter block cuffs and put it in the lifters but people want what they want so that's what we do so just letting you know that that is not a that doesn't mean that the lifter is bad or anything everything here you know what, I was wondering how tight of a fit this is, just while we're sitting here. That's actually kind of a loose fit. Like, I guess it can't be like super tight. Let's see if you can hear that. There's a little bit of jiggle in there, where versus the stock ones, like it is, that's how much tighter of a fit the stock anti, there is a little rotation. I don't know if you can hear that at all. But the stock anti-rotation clips seem to be pretty good. I haven't ever run into a situation where make sure we get that back right. Where where they've broken or anything. This same type of technology is like when I pulled apart my six liter LS engine. It had like these little baby edges holding the lifters from rotating, but it's still a composite material like this. So, and Sportsters have had a composite type of anti-rotation clip since I want to say 2004 maybe or 2006, something like that. So, whatever. You know, I guess it's whatever floats your boat, but I haven't ever seen one of these break or anything. So... They aren't terrible, but maybe these are better. I don't know. That's what the customer wanted. So everything's all cleaned up. The new oil pump, the new cam plate, all of the Veltrain components. I mean, as far as the push rods. So while this video is running longer than I was thinking it was going to go, so there's going to be a, a part two. But thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Make sure you check that out. Thanks.